think while they were while during the um, while we were taking the blood, um, nothing but the blood was really ringing in my spirit. So if we can just sing that song one more time as we go into a time of the word. Let's give it up for them one more time. And let's give it up for the Holy Spirit that is present in this place this morning. Amen. First and foremost, once again, I just want to thank God for this day and for this opportunity to be here before you all. I would also like to thank our regional head, Pastor Johnny, for being with us today and also for his covering in this place. We wouldn't be Cap City without Pastor Johnny. So God bless you, Pastor. God bless you to our elders, my amazing husband, our presiding elder, Elder Yao, Elder Sam in the back. God bless you both for your fearless leadership. Amen. And happy May 1st, y'all. Can y'all believe four months down? Turn to your neighbor and say, happy May 1st. Happy May 1st. <laughs> yes, yes. There's a saying that says, April showers bring May flowers. It also brings um, May allergies, y'all. Hmm. Hmm. My allergies were cool till this morning, but the Holy Spirit will come and take control. Amen. But I also pray that this month of May will be your month of blooming. I pray that any seed that you have sown in the first four months will begin to manifest in this year in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And as my husband mentioned, this month is also a special month here at Cap City. The ladies are going to be holding it down this month, and I am honored to kick it off for the ladies this month. But we're also starting a sermon series, and this sermon series is called Possess the Nation. So as you all know, we are a city assembly of the Church of Pentecost, Maryland region, and the theme for the year for the Church of Pentecost is equipping an army to possess the nations. And we know a few weeks back, we were blessed to have our national head in the building. He talked a bit about equipping um, equipping up as, a, as an army, but we're going to take it back just a little bit more, and we're going to talk about that possess the nations part, okay? Are y'all ready? All right. So the, <laughs> the title of my message today is What's Your Why? What's Your Why? And before we get into that too much, I just want us to understand what the word possess means, Okay. So the word possess, I went, you know, right to Merriam-Webster because she always holds it down. And in Merriam-Webster, I saw that possess means first to have and to hold as property. It also means to seize and take control of, to enter into and control firmly or dominate. So in the context of the theme that I previously mentioned, we essentially want to take hold of the world for Christ. Amen. We want to come to a point where the earth is dominated by people who believe in Christ. 
Okay, so let me tell you guys a quick story before we dive into the word a bit more. So last week, this week that just passed, I was sitting there in one of my group chats. It's my jumping into my destiny group chat. Ladies, if you're watching, shout out. Um, but we were in the group chat and all of a sudden somebody sent a weird combination of characters and it started with wing and then it was like a letter, a number and a bunch of other things. And I was like, what is this? Shortly after, one of my friends uh, replied to says, Portia, quick, there's a promo code for 10 free wings at Wingstop. It's only a, there's only a few of them, so jump or else it's gone. So I said, okay, so I pick up my phone. I happen to be on the phone with our sister Belinda. Hey, Belinda, you mind waving? I was on the phone with Belinda at that time, and I was like, oh my gosh, my friend sent me a code for wings. Let me go try and see if it works. I tried it, it didn't work. I was upset. And, and then I text my friends. I was like, so y'all really sat on this code and let me miss out on these wings. And they were like, you know what, Portia? You're probably not putting the code in right. So let me put it in for you and see if it goes. So one of my friends pulls out her phone and she puts in the code and it works. So I'm super excited. I'm on the phone with Belinda. I pause our conversation and I'm like, Belinda, the code worked. Go order your wings now. So we stop our conversation, she orders her wings, we're both excited, and we eat our wings happily ever after, right? So to everyone who side-eyed me, I saw some side-eyes, like, Portia, you didn't tell me, forgive, okay? It all happened so fast, I was just very excited about the wings, so I went to go get mine. But when we look at the situation, right, when I found out about the code, or when my friends found out about the code, they were so excited to share this good news with me that they ran to our chat right and they were like come get it and then I stopped what I was doing in my conversation with Belinda to share the good news with her as well so in a similar matter as Christians when we come to the saving knowledge of Christ we have even better news in the wings we have the key to life we have the promo code to life so in the same manner we should be jumping at the opportunity to share this good news with anybody who will listen share it with the person next to you share it with your family your friends whomever will hear we should sing it to the tops of the treetops but we all know this is really good to do we're all very aware but how many of us are really doing it hmm? now i'm looking at myself because I'm guilty, we're all guilty. And sometimes it's because we don't really understand our why. We don't understand the gravity of what we have in our hands and what we can do with that thing. So to start off, we're gonna take it back so we can understand our why. Let's understand why we've been called to do this thing. So we're gonna take it back to when mankind was created. So let's jump to Genesis. In Genesis chapter one and two, we see that man was created and woman was created. And we were created in the image of God. And in Genesis 126, it says, mankind was made in the image of God to reign over all creation. So not only were we created, we were put in a position of power, right? But then you go to Genesis three and there was a shift. And what happened in the shift? Now, when we read the scripture, Adam liked to blame Eve, but I like to say they did it together, right? So they both ate of this fruit of the tree that they were not supposed to, right? And because of that, all men were cursed. So I'm cursed, my husband's cursed, we all cursed. The people that are walking outside are all cursed, right? Because of what happened in the garden. But there's something beautiful that happens after that. And that's something that we spent all of last month celebrating and talking about. And that was when Christ came down, died for our sins. But the beautiful part was he resurrected, right? So just as we took the blood this morning in remembrance of that act, why do we remember that act? It's because that was the key. That was the promo code to our redemption and to our restoration. Had it not been for this act that Jesus did on the cross for our sins, we wouldn't have access to it. The problems of life, those things that plague us would continue to plague us. Those things that cause us to be down, depression, whatever the case may be, if we didn't have the key to life, if we didn't have that promo code to life, we would literally just be there, desolate. We would be subject to our depraved nature. But by God's grace, by God's grace, and because of what Christ did on the cross, we now have access to this beautiful thing. Now, if we turn to Galatians 1, 3 and 4, if you all wouldn't mind turning there with me. 
in Galatians 1, 3, and 4, and I read. So in this area, we see Paul is talking to the church of Galatia, and this is the beginning of his letter. So it's one of the first things he tells them when he starts speaking to him, speaking to them, and he says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age according to the will of God and uh, uh, will of our God and Father, amen. And I just wanna look at verse four one more time. It says, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age. Now, who all here can say that the age we live in is evil, right? It's a little, it's a little twisted, but because of what Christ did on the cross for our sins, once again, the scripture is showing us that we're rescued from all of that. We, we really ain't got to deal with it if we don't want to, right? And what's the way that we don't deal with that thing? It's by staying in communion with God. It's by continuing to grow in our walk with Christ. It's by continuing to do things like what we did this morning where we stand in remembrance of what he did and of that redemption that was through his blood in Ephesians 1 verse 7 it says in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace amen amen and I'll just one more scripture we all know it so I'm gonna ask you guys to say it with me because I feel like sometimes we need that extra reminder can somebody tell me what John three sixteen says uh-huh uh-huh. Amen. Amen. So once again, we have everlasting life. We have eternal life through Christ. So why are we going around? Why do we allow people to say, oh, what's going to happen when I die? We already know what's up. But that only happens if we're in right standing with God. And we're going to touch on that a little bit later. But so now we know that once again, we, we were created we fell, but through Christ, we have redemption and restoration. Now, how does everyone find out about this redemption and restoration? It's through each and every one of us, right? Um, it's through each and every one of us. It's through the Great Commission. And if we can turn to Matthew 28, 16 to 20, let's read what the scripture tells us to do with this great information that we've received. Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20, and I read, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth have, has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. So we're literally called to take the good news to the world and this is what it basically means to possess the nations we spread the good news in hopes of spreading it from one end to the other end but my question to you is because in the beginning of this we all said something stops us from it what is stopping us from taking this good news to the world everyone may have their particular reasons but today we're going to quickly look at the story of Moses because I feel like sometimes when we look at the men of old as we call them men of old we don't Recall, remember the fact that they were men first, right? So there are several hindrances that they face, that we face, that we can learn from by studying them, right? So let's turn to Exodus 3 and look at a bit of Moses' story, and then we'll jump through some of the hindrances that we face when we're trying to possessing, trying to possess the nations. Exodus 3, we're going to start from verse 1. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. He looked and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, 
Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Verse five. Then he said, do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look at God. Amen. So beginning here and throughout uh, chapter four, we see that Moses has an encounter with God. And at the end of this encounter, he is given the charge to go back to Egypt and get the people of Israel out so they can go to the promised land. Now, one of the first hindrances that we see Moses face is himself. He deals with this thing called self-doubt. So if we can jump to uh, Exodus three, verse 11, we see that it says, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should not go, that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? After he says that, God low-key gives him a pep talk, like, it's cool, it's you, like, chill out, right? But then that isn't enough. If we jump to Exodus 4, 1, then Moses answered, but behold, they will not believe me or listen to my voice, for they will say, the Lord did not appear to you. How many of us deal with self-doubt? I know I'm guilty. How many of us are in situations where sometimes when you feel like the Holy Spirit is telling you to do something, you're like, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, me? But what we sometimes forget is if the Holy Spirit is telling you to do something, right? If he's calling you to do something, and if it's truly from the Holy Spirit, let me add that piece. Hmm? If it's truly from the Holy Spirit, he'll give you the tools that you need to do that very thing. So who are you to doubt what God has called you to do? That's really where, what, it, what it really is. It's not a, oh, who am I? No, 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 who are you to doubt the one who created you? You feel me? Like God said, hey, Fatima, I brought you to this earth to be a nurse, right? And then Fatima says, a nurse, like that? But it's like, he made you to be a nurse. So who are you to say, I won't be a nurse, you feel me? And I think the same thing goes for situations where we see somebody else's solution to an issue and we think that that's our solution. So let's say somebody was just sitting there minding their business and a job fell in their lap, right? Or an opportunity came their way. And then you're gonna say, oh, but then let me just chill, let me pray and the job is just gonna fall on my lap. Says that may not be your portion. You will be sitting there and sitting there and then the unemployment checks are gonna stop coming. And then you'll still be sitting there. So it's important for us to stay sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is calling you to do, right? When he calls you and when he tells you to do that thing, you charge for it like nobody's business. It really ain't nobody's business but you and God. But you're supposed to continue to go towards that thing because one of my favorite songs says, if he said it, we believe it, right? If he said it, He's not a God who will lie. If he said that thing about you, believe it and do it. Have faith in what he has called you to do. And it's like, it's crazy because I feel like I, we didn't, I didn't know until this morning that our sister Bernice was gonna be joining us this morning. But what she said about having faith in what God has called her to do, we were sitting there and I've spoken to, you know, the elders are, are my, my husband and my brother. So I've spoken to them about my message and Elder Sam literally texted me and said, whoa, Sister Bernice is here today for a reason. Because she has faith that this is what God has called her to do. And we're gonna talk a little bit later about impacting change, but I just want you to let that ring in your mind and in your spirit for a second. Because if there's something that God has called you to do and you're sitting on it right now, listen. <laughs> Pastor Johnny said he's gonna do it now. But sitting on that thing is basically disobeying God. And we don't wanna be in a situation where we're disobeying that which God has called us to do, okay? But another thing that tends to hinder us besides ourselves, and it's kind of an extension of ourselves, is our past, right? So if we um, look at Moses' story in Exodus 2, 11 to 15, we're not gonna read it because of time. We see that Moses was a murderer, right? He killed someone. And that's why he ran from Egypt to begin with, okay? And then God comes and says, hey, go back to where you killed someone, where you ran from, and go and bring a whole people, a whole nation out of that place. 
Now me with my fleshly mind, um, if I was Moses, I would have been like, oh no, I'm good. I'm cool. Thank you so much for thinking of me, but um, I'm going to pass on this one, right? But once again, like we said previously, we can't let our self-doubt, we can't let our past stop us from doing what God has called you to do. Listen, you may feel like, oh, I've lied, I've cheated, I've fornicated, I had a child out of wedlock, I've gone through trauma, I've been a scammer, whatever it is, right? Don't let that thing stop you from what God has called you to do. Listen, if you know that you have been scamming somebody, just repent now. You can bring the money to Cap City, though. We're looking for a building. But, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But all jokes aside, for real, for real, no matter what your past may entail, no matter what you've done in the past, God is still here with his arms wide open. And once again, we're talking about today, we have that promo code to life. And we should not let our past stop us from possessing the nations as we're called to do. You feel me? Like, just because you had a past, that past may be exactly the thing that someone needs to hear to bring them to Christ. If you say, hey, guess what? I fornicated too. I've been through some stuff too. So guess what? You can come to Christ. You can still serve God. You can still be a blessing to your sister and to your brother. Those are the things, our story, sometimes when we go through a journey, right? We sit, when we're going through the process, it's uncomfortable, okay? And when we're going through that journey, we're like, I don't understand. I don't get it. But when you get to the, the end of the tunnel, things tend to be so much clearer. So I just wanna pause here for anyone in this room who's going through a tough season. I want to just encourage you that only God knows why you're going through that season and what that season is going to bring you through. Sometimes when we look at something like gold or we look, like, look at a precious metal, it goes through a very, very sharp process. It goes through fire, it goes through all types of things before it gets to the shiny state in which we all want it. So sometimes we may feel like we're a bit rough, but that period that you're going through, that period in which you're being stretched, that period in which it feels like something is literally rubbing on you or grinding you is the period in which God is taking you through so that your story can be even that much more impactful. So whatever you're going through, listen, God has a plan, but all we have to do is submit to his will for our lives. Amen. Amen. Another thing that may be a hindrance to us is institutions. Okay. So once again, Sister Bernice, God bless you because institutions can be a hindrance. If we look at the story of Moses, we see that Pharaoh was not having it. Okay. Pharaoh was not having it. At first he said, uh, then it took 10 plagues, but even through those plagues, he was still, his heart was continuously being hardened. It wasn't until the 10th plague where it really felt like something was like pulled from under him that he finally said, all right, y'all can go, right? But even then, we'll touch on the next thing in a second, but even then, after he said, okay, then something else came to block. So even if there is a situation where you feel like an institution or a person in power is against you. Let me tell you, things can change in the blink of an eye. There's nothing too hard for God. And I wanna share someone's testimony. I won't share their name, but I remember a situation where one of our sisters in here was in a situation where her boss was giving her a hard time, okay? And she got to a point where she wanted to quit her job. If the person wants to, <laughs> yeah, I said that person should share their testimony, but um, I'm going to give you a brief summary in case that person wants to share their testimony next week. But um, they kept saying, you know what, I want to quit because this person is taking me through too much. But guess what happened? Because nothing is too hard for God, the boss was the one that got fired. The person that was causing that person's strife was literally removed from the situation. So sometimes the things that we feel like are impossible the things we feel like cannot be removed, yo, in a blink of an eye, it can just be gone like that. 
So no matter the situation, once again, no matter what you're faced against, do not let anything stop you from possessing the nations, especially, especially in those places where you know that God has called you to do so. Amen. And the last thing, as Pastor was hinting at earlier, even when, even when Pharaoh finally said the people of Israel could go, then he changed his mind and started coming after them, came with the whole crew. 600 chariots and all. So imagine you're the people of Israel. You feel like you're finally freed from bondage. And then once you see that you're like in the desert, you're in the middle of nowhere, you look back and your oppressor is chasing you. That's scary. And those situations can really shake you to the core. But what made it even worse is they got to a point and they see, oh snap, there's a whole body of water blocking us from getting to our destination. What do we do? So the people of Israel were shook. As some will say, they were shooketh, okay? They didn't know where they were going to go. And Moses said, you know what? Let's continue to trust the God that promised us, that promised our forefathers that he had a land for us. And let's see what he's going to do. And literally the unthinkable came to pass when the Red Sea was parted, parted right? So in those situations, once again, where you feel like there's a, a significant physical hindrance in the way, God can once again change the situation. He can change things so, so quickly. I remember, I think y'all shared this testimony before. We were in the process of buying our home and it was the week till close. And all of a sudden they started asking for this, these weird documents made no sense. Okay. And then a friend of ours called us and said, you're going through some issues with purchasing your home. Don't worry, everything's gonna be all right. And I turned to y'all and I said, does he understand what's going on? Like where, where? And at this point I was also, y'all like to talk about when I was pregnant. Well, after I was pregnant, I was also very hormonal. So when I found out about this, I just burst into tears because I said, we not getting the house. That's really what it is at this point. They're saying that we need all this stuff that we don't have. Let me tell you guys how God can change the situation in the flip of a switch, okay? The day before we were supposed to close, okay, they called me and the first call I got, they said, um, we're gonna have to change your date for closing because you haven't gotten the documents that you need. Um, if you're able to find it, we don't know what we're gonna do. So for now, let's postpone the date and see what happens, but I'll call you back later to confirm. So I told you, I said, well, let's make the plans we're gonna make for the next day because I don't know what's gonna happen. A few hours later, they call me back and they say, I spoke to my supervisor and they decided to waive the requirement for you. So you don't need any other documents. Just come in tomorrow at 9 a.m., let's sign and you get your keys. And I turned to y'all, it was funny because I still couldn't like fathom what was going on. So I turned to y'all and I was like, cause he wasn't in the room when I got the call. I was like, this is what they called and said, I don't know how to feel. I don't know how to react, but they said we should still come at 9 a.m. So let's just go. Worst thing they say is we can't, we're not closing. So I, we didn't tell anyone. The only person that knew was my mom because she was at the house with us. So we get there in the morning and they just start having me sign the documents. All the escrow, they was like, yeah, sign, sign, sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here. And then she's like, okay, you're done. Here are your keys. And it was like in the moment I was so overcome, overwhelmed with emotion that I was just sitting there. And then y'all looked at the lady and he was like, so we're done? And she was like, yeah, you're done. Congratulations on your new home. And those are situations that don't make sense to the human mind. It doesn't make sense to our own like intellect. But once again, God can literally literally turn your situation in a blink of an eye. He can literally remove physical hindrances, physical, like things that are physical can be removed. So those things we sometimes say, oh, that's the God of the Old Testament. No, no, no. He's still doing those things today. It just manifests itself in a different way, right? So now we understand some of the hindrances, right? We can all acknowledge that some of these hindrances are things that we've dealt with, but we're gonna spend some time in prayer in just a bit 
uh, praying against these hindrances so they don't continue to plague us, so that nothing stands in our way of first fulfilling our destiny, but also in possessing the nations. But one of the questions I want us to touch on briefly is how do we affect change? And it's something that you already heard me kind of hinting at as we were going through. Let's turn to Acts 1 verse 8. Acts 1 verse 8, and I read, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. So how do we possess the nations? How do we affect change? We can't do it without the Holy Spirit. We cannot bring Christ to people if we don't have Christ. <laughs> but with the Holy Spirit, we can affect culture. We can affect things. We can make change. And even when we look at movements that have come through in the past couple of years, we have movements like Me Too. We have movements like Black Lives Matter. If we flash back, think about Black Lives Matter. Or think about that day that we all posted black squares on our social media. Half of us didn't know what it meant. But we post it, right? Can you imagine how much more impactful it would have been if we would have allowed the Holy Spirit to use us to do something like that for Christ? Like, let's look at what the disciples were able to, able to do. There was 12 of them. It's not like it was a whole gang. 12. So let's just, for the sake of, you know, seeing what that looks like, let's have 12. One, two, three. Three, sissy, might need to be number four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve, can you guys stand up? So this is what twelve people looks like, right? Twelve people were able to affect change across the world. Because of those twelve people, many of us are in this room today. If those 12 people didn't go out to literally possess the nations for Christ, do we think that the word of God, granted the word of God transcends no borders, but it took people to take the word to the different parts of the earth. America wasn't even formed at that point, right? But what they started is what continued to move through ages and ages, decades and decades, and brings us to where we are here today. So you guys can have your seats. God bless you. The world hold of them, heard of them. Listen, they weren't the holiest of holy, right? They all had past. They all dealt with their own issues, but they were able to overcome those issues to bring the word of God to everyone. They were able to overcome those things. They were able to allow the Holy Spirit to come and take control of their physical being so that they could be a blessing to the world. Now, in our culture, when we talk about how we impact change now, we impact change through culture, right? And when we are doing that, sometimes we get a little, we get a little twisted and we start getting a little lukewarm. And we're like, oh, well, I'm friends with these people. So they're having um, an event at a club. So I'm gonna go to the club and I'm gonna go have fun. And then I'm gonna tell them about Christ. But they're gonna look at your life and they're gonna say, oh, is this what Christians do? So that means that I can go to the club and I can do what I wanna do, but that's not how it should be, right? We have to live our lives unapologetically for Christ. We have to be, and once again, I'm not saying that we're perfect. We all fall short, right? We all fall short but we must be intentional in the things that we do so that our lives, so that our character can bring people to Christ. No matter what situation you find yourself in, no matter what, um, what segment you find yourself in, no matter what world, what field of employment you find yourself in, you are the light that's going to shine. And sometimes we don't realize what, how, what we do can affect generations or how what we do can affect someone to become a believer. But let's, let's take it real simple, real quick before we close. Let's say, let's look at y'all, for example. Everyone saw y'all's recent testimony. My husband was promoted. Woo -woo. But I'm using this to get to somewhere, right? So two years ago, y'all was an associate marketing manager, right? And he, did, he was working, he was doing his thing, and they said, you know what, we like what you're doing, so we're going to give you a promotion. So if y'all had an attitude, or if y'all wasn't really doing his work well, 
or if Yah was popping off at whoever was coming his way, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have given him the promotion. Right? Sometimes the, it's the, the regular thing, not the regular things, but our character traits or the fruit of the spirit that are manifesting in us that can open doors for us. Right? So once again, he started in that position, he got a promotion. By God's grace, he's gotten another promotion. Granted, it's the favor of God upon his life, but it's also him allowing the Holy Spirit to use him in his workplace. So allow the Holy Spirit to use you wherever you are. Our sister Bernice said she wants to allow, she is by faith stepping into the position that she's trying to step into. By faith, if she gets that position, it's our prayer that the Holy Spirit will use her to impact change in Montgomery County. Now, if you are in a hospital, we pray that by what you are doing, people will come to the saving knowledge of Christ. My brother here is also a pharmacist. By what you're doing, may people come to the saving knowledge of Christ. No matter what field you are in, my sister Selena in the back is a real estate agent. Maybe by the grace of God, her hand upon a property can change situations because of her allowing the Holy Spirit to use her to be a blessing. I pray that no matter what field you are in, may the Lord use you to possess the nations. Because without the Holy Spirit, we're merely fleshly beings but our salvation and our subsequent empowerment by the holy spirit gives us the tools that we need to be ambassadors of christ amen can we stand on our feet and enter into a time of prayer quickly i just want us to spend some time praying on just the hindrances the things that hinder us in life the things that hinder us in possessing the nations and the things that hinder us in fulfilling our destiny so if you have a hindrance, I want you to be very honest with God this morning. Whatever is hindering you from doing the work of God, pray and ask God for that thing to be removed this morning. Pray that that thing will no longer plague you as you exit this church building this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray coming before you this morning, lifting ourselves into your hands, lifting our hindrances into your hands, Father, lifting the things hindrance, Father, that we pray may that be stopping Jesus. us from fulfilling our destiny, Let that from possessing hindrance be the removed nation. In we Jesus pray, Holy name. Spirit, that may that Anything, thing be removed. Any roadblock, Father, we come against it in Jesus' name. Father, anything, any sin that causes us to lose confidence, any issue that causes us to lose power from above, Father, may it be removed in the name of Jesus. Any physical roadblock, let it be removed in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, oh God, that anything, oh God, that has been set before us as a roadblock, set before us to make us stumble, step before us, that is before us to make us fall, we come against in Jesus' name. We ask, oh God, that if it be our past, Father, may we remember it no more and may we press on to what is before us. Father, if it may be any institution, we pray in the name of Jesus that anybody that will want us to be removed, may they be removed first in Jesus' name. Any institution that is that is being placed before us as a hindrance, we come against in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Any hindrance of God that would cause us to stumble in the name of Jesus, let it be removed. Lord Father, Jesus, we pray, oh God, and it's the every hindrance be removed in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I want us to take a few minutes just to commit our lives into the hands of the Lord. Let us pray that the Holy Spirit's will, that the Lord's will for our life will be done. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Father, let your will be done. Again, let your, your will, will be done in life this church. In, the name of Jesus. in our lives the as a people, let your will be done. Father, we pray, oh God, may we submit to your will. Father, may we submit to to in your will. Father, in the name of Jesus, if our own will gets in the way, we pray, oh God, that may your will, oh God, be what will be our desire. Let your will become our desire. Father, we've done it on our own for too long. Father, we've done it by our own strength for too long. But Father, we pray, let thy will be done. Let thy will be done. In Jesus' name. Father, we pray. If you're in the room and you feel like God has called you to be a change maker in this culture, Jesus. if you wouldn't mind raising your hands for a moment, I'm going to ask our elder Yao to pray for you. 
if you feel like God has called you to make change in this culture, to make change in the world, to make change in your world, please raise your hand unapologetically this morning. Raise your hand unapologetically and allow the Holy Spirit to come and take control this morning. Allow the Holy Spirit to come and have dominion this morning. Submit your all onto the Holy Spirit this morning. Allow him to use you to be a blessing to his people. And now Elder Yah will pray for us.